Queen Boris Johnson. He's the most socialist leader the Labour Party has ever had. He's the most anti-racist leader the Labour Party has ever had. He's the most internationalist leader the Labour Party has ever had. He's the leader of the Labour Party more than any other that has made it his life's work to bring people together to fight racism and to work for peace here in the UK and around the world. Yes, that's him. <laughs> and he will be, with your help, the Prime Minister of a truly transformative Labour government that's fit to be mentioned in the same breath as that great 45 to 51 Labour government that created our National Health Service when they said there was no money left. Because when we achieve that government, when Jeremy Corbyn is Prime Minister, when Diane Abbott is Home Secretary, when John McDonnell is Chancellor, that will be a government for the 99% governing with the 99%. That will be a government that sets about, with your help, achieving a fundamental, fundamental and irreversible shift in wealth, power and control in favour of working class communities in all their diversity. And that government, by the way, won't just be the achievement of Jeremy, Diane and John McDonnell. It won't just be the achievement of the Shadow Cabinet members you've heard from today. It won't even just be the achievement of people lucky enough to be Labour MPs. It will be the achievement of half a million Labour Party members. It will be the achievement of millions of trade unionists. It will be the achievement of millions of people in diverse working class communities across this country who go out to make the dream we've always had of a better society Society with a socialist government become a reality. So I want you to give a huge Leeds welcome, a huge Leeds welcome to the next Prime Minister of this country, a brave man, a decent man, your mate Jeremy Corbyn. Labour Roots event. This is the Labour Party that we want it to be, active in communities all over the country, and the Labour Roots events are to discuss and debate local campaigns, national campaigns, and international issues, but above all, it's the opportunity for people from every community and all of our party to come together and debate and discuss the future on our agenda, not one set by the mainstream media or those who would wish us ill. So I want to say a huge thank you to all those volunteers that have come together today to put this event together. They are the ones that made it happen. Thank you very much, all of you, volunteers, the staff team and everyone else because you've done a great job. And thank you to Jane and Chris. They are going to be great MPs to add to the great MPs we've already got from this area. Because the campaigning work is about electing a Labour government in, I hope, the very near future. But it's also about facing the reality of what modern Britain is about. The Tory party might wish to debate which of their 12 candidates is capable of winning a majority of whatever their membership now is. Let them get on with it. I'm not very interested. I'm more interested in the alternative that we will put forward. The Tory government, the Tory government along with their Liberal Democratic compasses in 2010 decided the way forward was the political choice of austerity. That austerity has left us with the most divided, economically divided country 
anywhere in Europe. The greatest gap between the richest and the poorest of any industrialized country except the United States. And when the wealthiest minority, and it is a tiny minority, its wealth grew by 50 billion last year, at the same time as every council saw its budget slashed, more and more children went into poverty, more and more people ended up sleeping on the streets, and many faced yet another year of frozen wages and falling living standards and going into debt. And those that had been migrated onto universal credit found themselves desperately in debt and in many cases losing their homes. So when Theresa May told us when she stood on the steps, steps of Downing Street, she was there to tackle the burning injustices. Well, they're still there. They're not tackled and they'll never be tackled by a Tory party in hoc to the rich, the powerful, against the wishes of the rest of the population. So, our, our movement, our movement is pledged to end austerity, to invest in the future, to invest in our young people, to invest in a decent chance for every young person. The Tory government has slashed funding on education all across the country. Students go to university and come out with debts of 50 and 60,000 pounds. In the last election campaign, we had a choice to make about what we were going to do. We wrote our manifesto in two weeks, something that normally takes three years. And we took the view that young people should be given the chance they need in life. And so we pledged, and it'll be there in the next manifesto, a free nursery place for every child because that gives them the start in life. Free school meal for every child in primary school because hungry children can't learn. A pupil arts premium in every primary school that every child can learn a musical instrument and develop their creativity. And proper funding so head teachers don't have to spend the summer term wondering which teacher to get rid of because the school budget won't allow them to keep them any longer. genuine parity of esteem for older students deciding whether to go into vocational or academic education. We need people that have got degrees from university. We need people that have got good apprentices in engineering and computer technology and treat them the same as equally valuable as part and parcel of our society. So we will end student fees and take away the horrors of the debt Because that is what we're about. But it's also about confronting the problems we face of deindustrialization, of loss of jobs that have gone with it, and the hopelessness of so many communities that have seen nothing but the loss of skilled jobs in their communities over the past 30 years. So it is about investing for the future. The climate crisis is a serious and real one, which is why, on behalf of the Labour Party, I was proud to introduce a motion in Parliament which was simply saying this, there is a climate emergency, action must be taken, and every de government department must report back within six months about what they're doing about it. So, I've done the same with my shadow cabinet. They're all under notice to report back on what they're doing. Barry has outlined all of that. Because we are serious about it, we're serious about the Paris Climate Change Accord, and we say to Donald Trump, who's coming this way, stand by, don't walk away from that Climate Change Accord. It's our future. It's the young people's future you're dicing with. And that means opportunities as well for sustainable green energy. It means support for people going through difficulties and giving them the hope and opportunity of new, new jobs. It's like the Green New Deal in the United States. Ours is going to be a green industrial revolution. Now then, we achieve all of these things and the National Education Service and all of this by being a party and a movement 
totally and absolutely united to our common cause and purpose. Destroying racism within our society, ending division within our society, and recognise every child from every community in every part of the country deserves the same chance, not a postcode lottery of wealth and power. So our party is there for that battle. Our half million members are there for our battle. We won't let whoever the Tory leader is take us into a no-deal Brexit and the horrors that go with that. We won't let the Tory party destroy the hopes and aspirations of millions across this country. And we will elect a Labour government that on the world stage will be a voice for peace, for democracy, for human rights and for reason. And stand with those people who are refugees through no fault of their own but human beings just like you and just like me who have suffered the privations of war and environmental disaster. So let's make this year 2019 the year of hope, the year of determination, the year of unity to achieve these changes. And when we learn, we learn from each other, that's what Labour Roots is about. But we also learn from those that think a great deal. And I always think it's important that we recognise the role of poetry in society. And one of my favourite poets is Maya Angelou, and I want to quote the last verse from her wonderful poem, The Cage Bird, because it says so much about hope in adversity. The cage bird sings with a fearful trill of things unknown but longed for still. And his tune is heard on the distant hill, for the cage bird sings of freedom. That freedom around the world to aspire to and achieve something good for the benefit of all, not a society that casts people by on the other side because of the poverty in which they were born or the unpreparedness of a country to face up to inequality and properly put the resources where they're needed to help the people most in need. That is our Labour Party. Thank you very much. And it's now my great pleasure to introduce the next band. I've always wanted to do this on my life. And it's ferocious dog who are coming on. Including a member who was there throughout the miners' strike, and I say this on behalf of the Labour Party: we will investigate all grief. We will investigate the way in which the miners and the Shrewsbury pickets were treated, because I want us to get to the truth. That's the only way of getting to justice. Thank you very much.